Demi Moore is an American actress and film producer who was born on November 11, 1962 in Roswell, New Mexico, USA. She began her acting career in the early 1980s and rose to fame in the 1990s with roles in movies such as Ghost, A Few Good Men, and Indecent Proposal. Moore has received several awards and nominations for her work, including a Golden Globe nomination for Best Actress for her role in Ghost. She has also been named one of the highest paid actresses in Hollywood. So let's look at the top 10 best Demi Moore movies. Number 10. Bobby, 2006. In 1968, the lives of a retrite doorman, hotel manager, lounge singer, buzzboy, beautician and others intersect in the wake of Robert Kennedy's assassination at the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles. You know, I never could sing. Couldn't carry a tune. Not even a Christmas carol. That's fantastic. My husband was always trying to get me to sing. Make a little joke. Number 9. Striptease, 1996. When her ex-husband gets custody of their daughter, former FBI officer, assistant Erin Grant needs money to fight the legal case to get her child back. As a result, she takes a job dancing at the Edgar Beaver Strip Club in Miami, where she befriends an imposing bouncer named Shad. Unfortunately, she also becomes an object of obsession for politician David Dilbeck, who gets what he wants through charm and violence. And what he wants is Erin. How do I look? Better than me. That ain't easy. Talk to her? Daryl's phone's out of order. I think he moved again. You know, I'd embrace the opportunity to maim his white ass up. I know you would, and that's really thoughtful, but I don't think it would, like, help me in court if I had him attacked. Erin, come on, chop, chop, I can't have... Number 8. The Gerard, 1996. With his gangster boss on trial for murder, a mob thug known as the teacher tells Annie Lyard she must talk her fellow juniors into a non-guilty verdict, implying that he will kill her son Oliver if she fails. She manages to do this, but when it becomes clear that he mobsters might want to silence her for good, she sends Oliver abroad and tries to gather evidence of the plot against her, setting up a final showdown. No, sir, I haven't. If I did serve for jury duty, would I be safe? Perfectly safe. No one would know your name or where you live. Mom, are you nuts? You're really going to be on the Louis Buffano trial? I need a little excitement. Number 7. About Last Night, 1986. In this adaptation of David Mamet's hit 1974 of Broadway play Sexual Perversity in Chicago, Danny and Bernie are a couple of single guys who live in the windy city and struggle to balance their desire for sex with the possibility of love. When Danny meets the cute Debbie at a bar, the friends frequent in Chicago's luxurious cloud coast, the two start a sexually charged courtship that leaves jaggled nerves and questioned motives all around. Will you look at the... Oh, shit, it's what's your name. I just pretend you don't see her, that's all. Don't look at her. Deborah. Number 6. St. Elmo's Fire, 1985. A group of friends graduate from the halls of Georgetown University into lives that revolve around paychecks and career aspirations. Kirby waits tables to pay for a law school. His roommate Kevin struggles at a DC newspaper as he lusts after the stylish jewels. Jules may be an object for adoration and envy, but 
Secretly, she has problems of her own. And if I don't come up with a cheaper solution, I'm going to end up a bag lady. Of course, I'll have alligator bags. <laughs> Talking about homelessness in front of homeless people. Oh. Looking into a window while the rain is pouring like you're in a horror movie. Kirby, how are you? I'm obsessed. Thank you very much. Make Number five, G.I. Jane, 1997. In the response to political pressure from Senator Lillian de Haven, the U.S. Navy begins a program that would allow for the eventual integration of women into its services. Number four. Disclosure, 1994. It is Michael Crichton adaptation. Tom Sanders is a senior executive at a cutting-edge technology corporation on the verge of releasing an innovative new product. Sanders' boss, Bob Galvin, is putting the final torches on a potentially a lucrative merger and everything is in order for Tom until a vamp from his past, Meredith Johnson, swoops in, stealing his impending promotion and then doubling down, suing him from sexual harassment. In Digicom's future. Which brings us to our advanced products group. Tom Sanders heads our manufacturing department. Tom, I wonder if you can come up here and review for us the revolutionary new product we call Archimax. Number three, Indecent Proposal, released in 1993. David and Deanna Murphy are a loving couple with a bright future. David is a talented architect. Deanna is a top-notch real estate agent. But when the recession hits, their finances take a nosedive. In the last ditch effort to save their dream home, they heat to Las Vegas to win their mortgage money gambling after they lose everything. A mysterious billionaire offers the solution to their money problem. One million if he can sleep with Diana. You want No, I haven't. The dress is for sale. I'm not. Number two, A Few Good Men, released in 1992. Lieutenant Daniel Caffey is a military lawyer defending two U.S. Marines charged with killing a fellow Marine at the Bay Naval Base in Cuba. Although Caffey is known for seeking plea bargains, a fellow lawyer convinces him that the accused Marines were most likely carrying out an order from a commanding officer. Caffey takes a risk by calling Cole, Nathan, or Jessup to the stand in an effort to uncover the conspiracy. Excuse me. I wanted to talk to you about Corporal Dawson and Private Downey. Say again? Dawson and Downey. Those names sound like they should mean something to me. But I'm... Dawson, Downey, the clients. The Cuba thing, yeah, so Dawson and Downey, right. <laughs> Done something wrong. Number one, Ghost, 1990. Seam Witt is a banker, Molly Jensen is an artist, and the two are madly in love. However, when Sam is murdered by friend and corrupt business partner Carl Berner over a shady business deal, he is left to roam the earth as a prowl spirit. When he learns for Carl's betrayal, Sam must seek the help of psychic Oda Mae Brown to set things right and protect Molly from Carl and his